Minecraft is an engaging sandbox game that has captivated millions worldwide and stands as a testament to creativity and collaboration. However, the idyllic world of Minecraft is not impervious to the encroachment of nefarious entities, also known as pay-to-win servers. And in this video, I want to delve into the intricate web of deceit and gambling spun by these servers, examining the tactics they employ, the impact on the gaming experience, and the broader implications for the Minecraft community. Pay-to-win servers have not only changed the dynamics of fair play, but have also raised ethical concerns, particularly regarding their influence on children and economic disparities among players. The meteoric rise in popularity of Minecraft has attracted not only passionate players, but also opportunistic server owners looking to monetize their platforms. Pay-to-win servers gained traction as a way to generate revenue, preying on the desire for instant gratification among gamers. These servers will often employ deceptive advertising tactics, bribes, and even ruin the visual experience to lure players into purchasing content. They boast exclusive perks, game-breaking items, and unmatched advantages, painting an enticing picture that tempts users to part with their money. This is particularly problematic when it comes to younger players who may not fully grasp the implications of such transactions. The servers also undermine the fundamental principle of fair play in Minecraft with players who invest real money gaining an unfair advantage such as enhanced resources, overpowered weapons and exclusive access to certain areas, perks and commands, creating an imbalanced and unjust gaming environment. The business model of pay-to-win servers hinges on exploiting players' competitiveness and the fear of falling behind. By creating an artificial sense of urgency, most notably displayed by huge sales on the server's Bycraft stores that never seem to have an end, these servers encourage impulsive purchases, often leaving players with buyer's remorse. This model can be particularly damaging to children who, being a significant demographic in the Minecraft community, are particularly vulnerable to the allure of pay-to-win servers. The line between virtual and real-world currency can blur for younger players, leading to unintended and potentially harmful financial consequences. The pressure to keep up with peers on these servers can also contribute to a toxic gaming environment, fostering a sense of inadequacy among children who cannot afford to invest real money. The pay-to-win model also exacerbates the economic disparities among players. Those with the means to spend real money gain an unfair advantage, creating a virtual caste system wherein game success is dictated by financial resources rather than skill or dedication. This creates a discouraging environment for players who cannot afford to engage in these transactions. Minecraft servers thrive on their vibrant community, but the pay-to-win aspects contribute to the erosion of trust and camaraderie. The emphasis on financial transactions diminishes the collaborative spirit that has been the hallmark of the game since 2010. Children in particular may find it challenging to navigate this landscape, leading to a loss of the sense of community that Minecraft has always been known for. The presence of pay-to-win elements also alters the dynamics of the game. Genuine skill and strategic thinking take a backseat to monetary investments, leading to a superficial and hollow gaming experience. Children in their formative years may internalize these skewed dynamics, impacting their understanding of fair competition and achievement. The pay-to-win servers also compromise the integrity of Minecraft as a game. Instead of fostering a level playing field where creativity and skill are paramount, 
These servers prioritize financial transactions through keys, ranks, and loot boxes, tarnishing the essence of the Minecraft experience. This erosion of integrity can be particularly concerning for parents who want their children to engage in gaming environments that promote positive values. Navigating the legal landscape of pay-to-win servers can also be quite complex. While some may argue that selling in-game advantages is a legitimate business practice, others contend that it borders on exploitative and potentially breaches the terms of service of the game. Legal frameworks need to be sensitive to the unique vulnerabilities of younger players and the potential harm that can be caused by these servers. The introduction of crates in Minecraft where players have the opportunity to win valuable items but need to purchase keys with real money has been met with mixed reactions within the gaming community. While the concept of adding an element of chance and excitement to the game may initially seem appealing, it raises concerns about the impact on players' experiences, particularly for children. This shift from a focus on in-game achievements to a more commercialized approach can create a divide between players who are willing or able to spend money on keys and those who are not. This always results in an uneven playing field with some players having access to exclusive items simply because they can afford to buy keys. For younger players, this percentage chance strategy can be particularly problematic. Children may not fully comprehend the value of money and might be enticed by the allure of winning rare items, not knowing that these numbers are often skewed or faked entirely, leading them to spend real money without fully understanding the consequences. This raises ethical gambling concerns about exploiting a vulnerable demographic and potentially fostering unhealthy spending habits at an early age. Looking through the Bycraft stores of certain servers such as OP Blocks, Vortex Network and Fantasy Cloud, it was clear to me that EULA regulations set by Mojang have been taken as a suggestion by these owners instead of a rule, with one store selling a rank with a before sale price of nearly $1000. Whether the sale is a permanent institution, which is also breaking the Trade Descriptions Act by falsifying prices, or not, the items included with the purchases are inflated beyond necessity. While testing the efficiency enchantment for myself in a 1.18.2 world, efficiency 39 will mine obsidian, the hardest mineable block in the game, instantly. So selling a rank with a pickaxe enchanted with efficiency 150 is one of the many tactics used to make the price seem reasonable for what you would receive. Some servers would even provide bribes in order to have their players vote on server sharing websites as you can see here bringing their server closer to the top of the list. This in and of itself is a breach of regulations, similar to Amazon or eBay vendors providing incentives for positive feedback. Now, I am aware that many of my viewers are also subscribers to another Minecraft YouTuber, SalC1, who makes really great documentary style content and for the past few years he and his friends have been fighting back against servers like these and have actually forced some massive changes through their actions. I will leave his link down below, I highly suggest that you take a look if you haven't already. If you like what I do, you will definitely like his content, it's much better than mine. The reason I am mentioning him, however, is because while writing this script, I was fully expecting to include the practices of one of the very worst pay-to-win servers that has ever existed, namely Purple Prison. However, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the owners have completely revamped the server, removing most, if not all, of the pay-to-win aspects. In a video where I take a look at the worst that multiplayer Minecraft has to offer, I feel it's only fair to highlight a server that has taken steps to fix the issues and make sure that they get the credit they deserve for doing the right thing. Whether this is down to the YouTubers who fought back or to simply align with Mojang's terms of service, Purple Prison seems to have taken the steps that I have already discussed other servers have no interest in doing. 
Purple Prison is still thriving based on the player count I witnessed today, showing that the pay-to-win aspect is not needed in order to stay afloat, as other server owners would have you believe. And in conclusion, I want to take a look at some of the ways that this trend can be tackled without harming the player base or Minecraft as a whole. Combating the rise of pay-to-win servers requires a concerted effort to educate players about the risks involved. This is especially crucial for parents and guardians who may not be familiar with the intricacies of the gaming world. Promoting awareness of ethical gaming practices and encouraging support for legitimate servers can help steer the community away from these scams. Game developers bear a responsibility to protect their player base from unscrupulous practices, implementing stricter regulations, monitoring server activities and taking legal action against blatant scams can serve as a deterrent. Developers also need to consider the impact of their games on younger audiences and implement measures to ensure a safe and fair gaming experience for everybody involved. Empowering the Minecraft community to self-regulate can also be a potential solution. Encouraging players to report suspicious servers, sharing information about reputable platforms and fostering a culture of fair play can help thwart the influence of pay-to-win servers. Parents, in collaboration with the gaming community, can play an active role in guiding their children towards ethical gaming practices. And legitimate server owners themselves can also explore alternative monetization strategies that do not compromise the gaming experience. Cosmetic items, customizations and non-game-breaking perks can offer a sustainable revenue stream without sacrificing fairness as servers such as Hypixel and more recently Purple Prison have shown. This approach not only benefits players but also promotes a healthier economic model for the server owners. Finally, addressing the issue of pay-to-win servers will require collaboration between game developers, server hosts, players, and more importantly, regulatory bodies. A multifaceted approach that combines education, ethical practices, legal measures, and community engagement is essential to reclaim the integrity of the multiplayer Minecraft experience. By prioritizing the well-being of players, especially children, and fostering an inclusive and fair gaming environment, the Minecraft community can ensure that the game continues to be a source of joy, creativity, and positive social interaction for years to come. Once again, thank you so much for watching, have a great new year, and I'll see you in the next one.